Hello everyone, I'm Tanya Rivero. A mysterious whistleblower report is consuming Washington, but details are still limited. The Washington Post reports an unnamed U.S. intelligence official filed a complaint about a, quote, troubling promise President Trump made to a foreign leader on a phone call. Both the identity of that foreign leader and the contents of the alleged promise are still unknown. President Trump pushed back on the report, calling it fake news. Mr. Trump went on to write, quote, Virtually any time I speak on the phone to a foreign leader, I understand there may be many people listening from various U.S. agencies, not to mention those from the other country itself. Knowing all of this, is anybody dumb enough to believe I would say something inappropriate with a foreign leader while on such a potentially heavily populated call? The report has caused a rift between Congress and the intelligence community. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiff issued a subpoena to obtain the whistleblower's complaint, but the acting director of national intelligence, Joseph McGuire, is refusing to hand it over. Schiff vented his frustration to reporters Thursday. We do not have the complaint. We do not know whether the press reports are accurate or inaccurate about the contents of that complaint. But what I do know is this, if in a matter within the jurisdiction of the Director of National Intelligence, you have an employee of that community or a contractor or a detailee who follows the law and makes a complaint, and it is possible for the subject of that complaint to essentially quash the complaint or keep it from Congress, then this system is badly broken. And joining me now are Paula Reed, Olivia Gazis, and Siobhan Hughes. Paula is a CBS News White House correspondent. Olivia is a CBS News intelligence and national security reporter. And Siobhan covers Congress for the Wall Street Journal. Thanks to all of you for being with us. Siobhan, let me start with you. We know the inspector general for the intelligence community was on Capitol Hill today to brief lawmakers. Do we know what he told them and what he did not? We know that he did not reveal the contents of the whistleblower complaint. That remains unknown. One thing he did say, according to our sources, is that this was not a single episode. It involved multiple episodes and a series of events. We know that Democrats have come out absolutely furious. So, Paula, is there any idea what foreign leader President Trump may have been speaking to in the period that this whistleblower, uh, you know, the incident with the whistleblower is believed to have happened. Tanya, at this point, CBS News has not confirmed which leader the president reportedly made these assurances to. But during the time period where this alleged conduct would have happened, the president spoke with several different leaders, China, France, Russia. At this point, though, it would just be speculation to say who received this promise. All right, so Olivia, Chairman Schiff, said that the Department of Justice was involved in withholding details on this whistleblower report from Congress. So why would they want to do that? What would be their motivation? Right. So Schiff is arguing here that his his committee is entitled to this information. And we learned from uh, additional letters disclosed today from the inspector general of the intelligence community that 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 he tends to agree with Schiff. On the other side are DOJ and um, the the acting director of national intelligence. I just spoke with a senior intelligence official who broke it down like this. Uh, there are three parts to the statute governing the disclosure of uh, of this complaint to the intelligence committees. Uh, the acting DNI had a question about one part of it, namely uh, whether the complaint had to do with the funding, administration, or operation of an intelligence activity and whether that fell under its purview. So he consulted with DOJ. DOJ said, no, this doesn't fall under your purview. Uh, moreover, it also includes potentially privileged information. Therefore, it is not within your jurisdiction to give it to the intelligence communities. Again, the uh, inspector general uh, disagreed and said this actually does fall within that purview. Um, so, uh, so um, at it, this, this intelligence official I also spoke to said that the disclosure has been made to the relevant entities, meaning this could have already been handed over to a different committee, say Foreign Affairs. Uh, we just don't know, not knowing the substance of the complaint, mm -hmm. where it might have gone. So, uh, it's, so po it's possible then some <coughs> congressmen or some lawmakers are aware of this information at this point. 
It's possible, but again, not knowing the substance of the complaint, we simply don't know where it may have wound up. And in terms of the chain of command, Olivia, we have the acting director and the inspector general, uh, and they both seem to have different opinions about the urgency of this information, and, and they, they don't seem to be on the same page. One does not have, uh, does not have seniority over the other, correct? Uh, well, not if you ask Adam Schiff. No, he's saying that, you know, the, that the ICIG's um, opinion is valid here and uh, that the DNI shouldn't be able to essentially overrule that. So there is some question about this, though. Mm -hmm. yes. All right. So, Paula, what are you hearing from inside the Trump administration in the wake of this report? And do we know if the White House was involved in this decision to block the release of the complaint to Congress? Well, we know as part of that assessment that Olivia just laid out in terms of determining what is and is not privileged information, the White House Counsel's Office, along with the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel, they were all involved in those discussions. Anytime there's a question about whether certain matters are privileged, that would automatically trigger the White House Counsel's Office to examine it because the president is the only one with privilege. He's the one who would assert privilege. Now, in terms of public response, though, from the White House, the only public response has come from the president on his favorite platform, Twitter. He tweeted earlier dismissing these reports as, quote, fake news and questioning why on, on these calls where so many officials from the U.S. and foreign countries are listening in, why he would make any kind of illicit promise. Now, earlier today, I've spoken with several senior administration officials. None of them wanted to, to touch this story, but ultimately the legal argument coming uh, through these various letters that have been and submitted to the Hill from the White House seems to be that they believe the president falls outside the inspector general's purview and that any of his communications with foreign leaders, not only should they not be subject to whistleblowers who maybe object to the president's foreign policy, but also they should fall outside of his purview and this information should not be released to Congress or would, of course, almost immediately leak. All right, we're going to get to the role of whistleblowers in this situation in just a moment. But, but Siobhan, first I want to ask you, Schiff also said that acting director of national intelligence, McGuire, will testify in Congress next Thursday. What should we expect from that? You should expect Mr. McGuire to get an absolute grilling because Democrats are furious. They question his decision to withhold the whistleblower complaint from Congress. They question his legal basis. Remember, the stakes here are very high for Mr. McGuire because Mr. Schiff today suggested there might be a court battle over this. So Mr. McGuire will have to tread very carefully. Whatever he says could potentially become fodder for the coming potential legal battle. All right, so let's get back to the whistleblower system. Olivia, can you explain why this whistleblower system exists in the first place? Was it a reaction to something that's happened in the past? Uh, well, sure, it exists to ensure that if and when uh, people within the intelligence community, which obviously operates in large part in secret uh, and deals in classified information, uh, when those people bear witness to wrongdoing, they have a secure avenue to disclose it in a way that protects their identity and potentially their job, meaning they're not you know, punished or otherwise retaliated against. And again, precisely because whistleblowers within the intelligence community are dealing with classified information, this specific act, the Intelligence Community Whistleblower Protection Act, makes sure that they, when they raise concerns, protect classified information and still can be protected from retaliation. All right. Fascinating and mysterious, all this. I'm sure we'll be learning more in the days ahead. I want to shift gears now. Paula, President Trump was asked about the state of gun control policy in an interview with Fox News this morning. Here's that clip. Guns. We're told that your Justice Department a couple weeks ago gave you a package, legislative package. You might move on it Thursday. What are you going to no, do? No, we're not moving on anything. We're going very uh, slowly in one way because we want to make sure it's right. And so, Paula, you've been speaking with top White House officials about gun control. What have you learned? Tanya, we've learned that it's unlikely the White House will put forth its proposal before next week when the president is expected to be in New York for the U.N. General Assembly. So we're likely at least 10 days out from any proposal from this White House. But it's clear that conversations continue and this is not yet solidified. We're told the president continues to work the phones, talking to folks on the Hill about what they would be open to. Mitch McConnell's been clear that any Republican action on guns has got to come from the White House. If they're going to build a bipartisan coalition, it has to start with a president president putting forth his proposal. Now, he appears to be open to something along the lines of Manchin Toomey and trying to expand background checks for commercial gun purchases. 
but he's not open to universal background checks. We've learned there's a lot of other things that he believes are off the table, but right now he's trying to pin down lawmakers on what they would be willing to support. Because, of course, in some of the previous votes on Mansion Toomey, they were only able to get about four uh, members of the GOP to support that. But senior administration officials tell us a lot has changed since 2013 and the last time this came up. For example, Tanya, there's been a lot of action at the state and local level after after these increase in, in mass shootings. There's been a change in technology. Obviously, there's a different president. But there's also a different relationship between the GOP on the Hill and the Justice Department. They believe it's more collaborative. That's why you've seen the attorney general uh, working the room up on the Hill, trying to garner some votes, get a sense of where people are. Right now, Tanya, my sources are telling me there is no solid proposal. They're still trying to hash out where that middle ground is, where they can get enough GOP support to possibly get something done. And so, Paula, is the White House blaming the timing on the U.N. General Assembly? And, and doesn't, you know, if you look ahead, won't the president always have a busy schedule? Well, certainly. Uh, it appears that there is still an appetite, an honest effort here at the White House to try to get something done, though it appears the president is running up against the realities of how hard it is to garner GOP support for any kind of action on guns, because folks are, of course, worried about the NRA, the president, others up for re-election in 2020. They want to make sure that they don't do anything that would cause blowback uh, from them. In terms of the timeline, Folks around here get a little touchy if we if we say that this has been postponed. And it does appear that these conversations are ongoing. Sometimes these things do take a while. So I, I do think I'll, I'll give the, the White House the benefit of the doubt on this. It does appear they want to do something. It's just taking time to figure out what exactly they can do to move the needle here. All right. So, Siobhan, how does all of that line up with what you're hearing about guns and any kind of gun reform on Capitol Hill? Well, it's not encouraging that a day after William Barr was on the Hill taking the temperature of lawmakers, the White House floating a trial balloon, there does not seem to be any widespread consensus emerging in favor of the expanded background checks that were just mentioned. Uh, as was previously mentioned, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has insisted he is not going to bring anything to the floor until President Trump has said what he supports. Initially, we expected that plan to be revealed when Congress came back from its August recess. That week of September 9th. That didn't happen. We're now in the second week. And the longer this gets delayed, the more we get into 2020 politics. And it does look fairly unlikely at this moment that something will pass. All right. Siobhan Hughes, Paula Reed, Olivia Gazis, thanks to all of you for being with us. We really appreciate it.